Hello, I'm Amber Uper, and this is a model kit review. And for today's model kit review, I'm going to be looking at the uh, Vulcan Scale Models version of the British Light Tank Mark 6C. Uh, this this is a kit of a a tank that was um, in use. Um, just before World War II and at the beginning of World War II. Uh, the camo pattern on the box art here is uh, what was in use in Malta uh, at the beginning of the war. And these tanks were also used in the, uh, uh, the Middle East and uh, North Africa at the beginning of the war. So let's, uh, let's take a look here. Uh, so we got the, this is, uh, the kit is made by Vulcan Scale Models which is uh, from Hong Kong. And uh, it's got two addresses on here. It's, uh, there's a Japanese agent, uh, but apparently this, uh, this kit, this company is out of Hong Kong. So, let's take a look here. Open up the box. This is a nice sturdy box. Um, yeah, nice heavy sturdy cardboard bottom. And the first thing you notice when you open up the box is it comes with a little cutting mat. And um, it has uh, um, etched metal parts. That's, a, that's two things that make this kit. And it's a more expensive kit, but it's a, then again, it's a nice kit. So, i got to move the box top. Okay, so let's, uh, let's take the bag out of the box. We'll put the bag over here for right now. Let's take a look at the instructions. And so there's your instructions. And let's see what it says here. During the interwar period, Vickers Armstrong produced a series of light tanks for the British Army, with the light tank Mark VI series being the final type. Compared to earlier marks, the turret was extended at the rear to give space for a wireless set. Its Horstman coil spring suspension system was found to be durable and reliable. However, the tank was short in relation to its width and pitched on rough ground, which made accurate gunnery difficult when the tank was moving. The Mark 6C, the last and also the most powerfully armed in the Mark 6 series, was different to the earlier versions as it lacked a commander's cupola and was armed with air-cooled 15 and 792 BESA machine guns, or BESA, whatever. Um, these tanks saw action in the early World War II campaigns in France and North Africa. And Malta, of course, that's the, the camo pattern. So, uh, now that we know that, uh, here's the camo pattern, here's the paint markings. Um, these were like this until 19, until August of 1943. Uh, let's see. Now, anyway, so let's take a look. So we have this big multiple fold out here. Let me go over here first. Here's all of your your um, sprues and uh, where to find the parts, all that good stuff. I'm going to get into uh, um, the hull. Looks like they do. The, you're, you're working on the hull first. Uh, so there's that, and then the uh, and you get the um, suspension parts. Let me get on with other stuff there, and then let's turn it over here. And Here's the rest of the instructions, all the little detail parts that go on the outside and whatever. And then we get to this. Now this is uh, the 9th Lancers, France 1940. So these were the forces that the Germans pushed out of, out of France at the beginning of the war. Uh, part of the Dunkirk thing, I believe. And uh, the other paint scheme right there, which is from Malta. So, there you have it for the instructions. Looks like these are, uh, are nicely detailed instructions. It's pretty, uh, pretty easy to figure out where everything goes. 
Um, and you can see by the instructions that there's a lot of little parts that uh, for the detail parts and that. So, put them over here. And now we get the bag. And you can see that the hull is in a separate little compartment in the bag. So, I remembered to use my to bring my scissors instead of uh, trying to use a hobby knife. So let's get this open, and we'll see if my scissors will cut. That could be interesting if they don't cut. Cheap ass scissors. That's what that is. All right, so there we go. So here's the hull. Um, a nice little one-piece hull. Put that over there, and then let's take a look at what else is in the bag. <laughs> yes, I I do struggle with this stuff because uh, I chose poorly on which pair of scissors to grab. Okay, so. Here's the first thing that comes out of the bag. Down here you got a nice handy dandy little cutting mat, which I thought was pretty interesting. Looks like they give you a little um, uh, Ziploc bags to put all your little um, S-metal parts in or something like that. I don't know exactly what the deal is on that. Um, and here's your, uh, your uh, decals for the unit markings and all that stuff. Let's see here. Is either end of this bag open? No. <clears throat> there we go. All right. So let's take this out. So here's one of the etched metal parts things. Not sure what that's for. I'm sure it's in the instructions. Here is, ah, I see, they're in uh, little Ziploc bags. That's what it is. Here's the backs of the Ziploc bags, and they're taped to this thing, which is your little cutting board, I guess. It's, um, this is just a piece of, um, of paperboard. It's not rubberized or anything like that, as far as I can see. So, but here's a bunch of uh, X-Metal parts. Tiny etched metal parts. I don't even know what some of those are. Looks like there's bolt heads or rivet heads in, in these little strips right here. And these, uh, these could be parts of the gun mount or something like that. It's hard to say. And of course, you know, your, your uh, unit markings and uh, the other decals. So there's that. And then, interestingly enough, this kit comes with springs. And these little metal rods for the um, suspension system. That's very interesting. I, I've not seen a kit that came with uh, these kind of parts before. It's quite, uh, quite, um, quite the uh, advanced kit here. And let's see, here's some small parts for the tank, and some more parts. Not sure what that is. Those might be the rings for the um, for the hatches. And then what is this? This is oh, this is your your lights, the clear parts for the uh, well. I, I assume it's for the lights. <coughs> okay, so uh, put them over there. And that. Let's take a look at what's in the bag. Get all the parts out of the bag. Dump them out. This, <laughs> this is a separate bag. Because they're not happy with just having one bag. There's separate bags for each group of parts. It's really quite interesting. Right. So, we'll just throw that over there. So right, here we go. This is, um, looks like the top of the tank. Yeah, okay, we'll do it that way. Top of the tank, uh, rivet details, all that good stuff. I'm thinking this is probably the front plate, 
Or maybe it's the back plate. Um, yeah, that's the back plate. Unless that's the front of the tank instead of the back. <laughs> Hard to say. Your fenders, uh, other parts, lots of parts. There's a shovel here. That looks like the muffler. Another piece of the body, another piece of the body. So there's one sprue. Let's see, we'll take this one out so we can look at it. It's really quite the thing with it. All each sprue having its own bag. I don't think I've seen that in a kit before either, so that's quite interesting. Okay, so here we have, I'm guessing this is the base of the turret. Uh, hatch parts, springs for the uh, suspension, uh, a bunch of detail parts, which I'm not sure what they are, but I'm sh I know that the instructions will uh, tell you what it is. I think that's the uh, front of the turret. The gun mantlet or something, whatever that, or maybe it's just the front part, one of the front parts of the, uh, no, it's not that, so I'm guessing it's part of the turret. So there's that, and then we have detail parts here. Let's see, all right, so here's your gun barrels. Um, I'm not sure what the other parts are, but here's the turret itself in a Ziploc bag. Isn't that something? So there's the turret. Ah, yes, I was right about the, the gun mantle. That would fit right on here like this. So, yeah. So you got a large... <laughs> You got two hatches, a large one and a small one. The, the turret shell is pretty basic, but I'm sure there's lots of parts that are going to go in that. Okay, and then we got, let's see what's in this bag. Oh, this is suspension parts. Oh, we'll take a look at the suspension parts. Okay. Look at all the different suspension parts. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how this works if the uh, if the springs are just there for looks or if they're actually functional when you build this thing. That would be interesting. All right, here's your uh, road wheels or whatever they're called. Uh, the bogey wheels, whatever it is. The, the wheels that the tracks ride on. That. Alright, so, and there's your drive sprocket wheels. Um, yeah, there's not too many wheels on this tank. It's only got two sets of, um, I think there's three, let's take a look here. Yeah, if you look at it here. you got your two sets of suspension and then the drive wheels here. So, and one of the, the rear set of suspension is also the back uh, wheel, if you want to call it that. So, all right, and then we have the bag of tracks. Now this one has two separate ways to build it. Oh, that, no, I think this falls asunder. I think what it is here is that you get solid set, solid parts, like the part that sits on the ground, and then you get the individual treads where they go around the wheels on the front of the thing where it wraps around the uh, drive wheels and whatever because these pieces are you know pre-assembled sections and uh, so let's say I think that's how this is going to end up being built is the pre-assembled sections in the areas where the uh, where the track is sitting straight on the and it's like this section here 
and then you've got this little short section here, which is probably these, and then you've got these sections here, and then you've got to wrap it around here and back here, and that's what all the individual track sections are for. So this is definitely not a beginner's kit. Um, but you know, a lot of the uh, the newer tank models are coming with um, either all individual uh, track sections like this, or the option of that and um, uh, the rubber tracks. Um, one of my previous uh, model kit uh, reviews I did was uh, they had both options in it. So, so yeah, this is uh, this is the parts you get. So it looks like it's going to be quite the uh, quite the job building this. It's going to be a nicely detailed tank when it's done. Yeah, that's. Uh, let me just put that on like that, and there's your, yeah, there's your, uh, your turret right there. And all the detail parts, of course. So, so there we have it. And I shall pile this all up. Grab the box. Put the parts back in the box. This goes in there, and this goes in there. Instructions go back in there. And there you have it. There's my uh, model kit review for the British Light Tank Mark 6C as produced by Vulcan Scale Models. Thanks for watching.